Howdy guys, welcome to the first Minecraft 1.10 snapshot. And in this snapshot guys, we have a lot of new blocks, we have some new mobs, and a lot of new mechanics. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first block we're going to take a look at today is the magma block. So naturally being made of magma, when you step on this block, you take some damage. Although you can shift, and if you shift you don't take any damage while you're on the magma block. And same thing happens when you're wearing Frostwalker boots. So now you can just basically walk across the magma block normally without taking any damage. So that's quite useful to know. This block also naturally spawns in the nether, which I'll show you, but you can also craft it with some magma cream. So if you place magma cream in a 2x2 two two configuration like that, you can craft the magma block. So another cool thing about these magma blocks is that if you place a water source block on top of them, just like that, they will actually get rid of the water source block here. So let's just see that. So there you go, after about 15-20 seconds, the magma block actually eliminates and deletes, vaporizes basically, the water source block that is above it. So not only that, but the magma block is now the first block in Minecraft that can preserve light sources. So check this out, if I go ahead and place a torch down right here, and then remove it, the magma block actually absorbs the light from the torch, and is now emitting light at a level uh, one less than the torch. So, lava lamps in Minecraft confirmed. That is amazing. And I'll just show you here, if I get rid of this, then the light goes away. Um, it also works, you know, at a greater distance, of course. Uh, whatever the light level is at the magma block, that is the light level it preserves. So you see it's a little bit diminished now. And you see if I get rid of it, it goes away totally. But, yeah, that is a huge deal. That's, <laughs> that's absolutely amazing. That's probably my favorite feature of this block. It preserves light levels. There are also two new death messages associated with the magma block this snapshot. So one of them is that you discovered the floor was lava. So the other death message is basically this one. Uh, your username walked into danger zone due to zombie or whatever mob that killed you. So that is the other death message. So the next block we have is the nether wart block. And as I suspected, this is actually a storage block for nether warts. It's not naturally generated. You can only craft it. And you basically put nine nether warts in a crafting table like that. And that gets you your nether wart block. Uh, it's also worth noting you can mine this by hand as well, so you don't actually need a tool to mine this one. Another interesting thing about the nether wart block is that if you place it down and then place a water bucket nearby, the nether wart block actually gets broken by water. So that's kind of cool. And yeah, it does work indeed for flowing water too. So yeah, kind of an interesting mechanic there. And next block is the red nether brick. And this is actually kind of a unique crafting recipe. So you put nether brick, not nether bricks, in a crafting table like that, along with nether wart, and that gets you your red nether brick. So it has a nice texture uh, when contrasted with the regular nether brick. So yeah, pretty good. Uh, next we have the bone block. Bone block can be crafted with nine bone meal in a crafting table just like that. And these bone blocks can be placed in a couple different orientations. So you can place them, you know, just sort of like logs. So you can have the sort of trunk section facing toward you or, you know, away for you, from you. Uh, and yeah, it looks, uh, looks kind of like quartz, but overall not a bad texture. Uh, and these do naturally generate underneath of desert. And if you have one of these bone blocks, you can indeed craft it back from the bone block into bone meal once again. There are also quite a few changes to villages this snapshot. One such change is that villages will now generate with the path block instead of gravel where there would be grass otherwise, such as in this plains biome. There are also now bridges made of wood planks which spin over water, as you can see here. And yeah, both these combined make the villages look really nice now. In Minecraft 1.10, there are also new village types. So for instance, here is a savanna village. You can see it uses acacia logs and acacia stairs and acacia wood planks for the bridges across here. And another village type is the taiga village seen here, where we basically have the spruce logs and spruce planks replacing the oak wood and oak planks. Also, as you can now see, mushrooms can now generate naturally much taller than before in dark oak forests. Also, a new subtle feature is that blocks which are affected by gravity that are in danger of falling upon being updated now give off particle effects as sort of a warning that you might see a collapse if you update a block. Another interesting change is that auto jump has now been added to Minecraft, so you can just simply walk up to a one block high jump and you'll automatically start jumping up that without hitting spacebar to jump manually. Now I also tested this with jumps that you can make but are not one block high, so for instance this right here 
you jump onto the enchantment table, and you can actually make this jump from the enchantment table to the top of this two block high uh, wall here. But yeah, you don't auto jump, you have to actually manually jump to make this one. So that's kind of an interesting thing to note, but yeah, auto jump now in Minecraft. And it is an option, so you can turn it off if you don't like it. Um, there are some situations where you could see where that's possible, so you just go into uh, controls here, and you go into auto jump, and just turn that off, and that will basically set it back so you have to manually jump once again. There are also new structures in this update, so one such structure is actually found underground in desert biomes. And so let's just go on down here in spectator game mode, and so this is one such structure. Uh, you can see it's made of bones, and let me just go ahead and clear out all the uh, the sand and stone and stuff around this so you can see what it looks like. So when you excavate everything out, this is what the new structure underneath of the deserts looks like. And yeah, it looks pretty cool. It uses the new bone block, and it sort of resembles a fossil of some type, almost like a giant rib cage of some long-deceased animal. Another new feature of Minecraft 1.10 is that in Mesa biomes, mine shafts will now generate on the surface. So these mine shafts have dark oak wood instead of the regular oak wood found in normal mine shafts. But these things have everything the normal mine shafts have, including, you know, loot from minecarts with chests. And also, as you can hear, there are some cave spider spawners, as you can see. So here's one right down here. Yeah, it looks like there's a cave spider spawner down there. And also, uh, rarely these things can have things like uh, stone and gold in them. So if I go ahead and make my way over here, you'll see one such mine, mine shaft. You'll see a bunch, there's a bunch of these things over here in this area. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you can have stone and gold here above the level that you normally find gold at. So gold in mine shafts is now a thing, which is pretty cool. And yeah, cool to see the new mine shafts in the Mesa. In this snapshot, we also have some new mob variants. So one such variant is a variant of a zombie called Husk. And these husks basically spawn in in warm and dry areas, so mostly in deserts and mesas. And when they hit you, I'll just let this guy hit me right here, they give you hunger for 20 seconds, which is kind of a unique property of this mob. And also, it's kind of unique that whenever it turns to daytime, so let me just go ahead and go into creative game mode, and I'll set the time today, you'll see that the husks actually do not burn during the day. So they're not like normal zombies, they are sort of a zombie variant, which is kind of cool to see. We also have some other new mob variants, and one such variant is the Stray, right here, found mainly in cold biomes. These guys actually shoot slowness arrows, which gives you slowness for 30 seconds, as you can see here. And they otherwise act like skeletons, so let me just go on in here. Uh, but, they do occasionally... They do occasionally drop slowness arrows, so if I just get over here, kill one of them, you see he drops some slowness arrow, uh, one slowness arrow upon death. So that's kind of cool to have a new mob variant for skeletons as well as zombies. There's also another new mob in the game, and that is the polar bear mob, as you can see here. And they usually remain neutral unless either you hit them, so if you hit them, you'll see he starts to come after you. And he sort of rears up to hit you, just like this. Like that. They do quite a bit of damage if you don't have any armor on. So, uh, yeah, you have to sort of run away from them. Uh, yeah, and basically, let me see if I can get this guy down. They drop fish. There we go. They drop fish when killed. And also, if there's a cub nearby, they'll also become aggressive. So if I get a little too close here, for instance, like this, maybe? Yep, like that. He starts to come after me, even though I didn't actually hit the baby mob. So, yeah. Kind of a cool new mob, polar bears, now in Minecraft. There have also been some changes to the nether in this update, and one such change is that the magma block now spawns in the nether. Uh, the magma block spawns down near the lava lakes in the nether, so it doesn't spawn like in the ceiling or anything. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Also new in the nether now, we have endermen that can spawn naturally there, so be careful what you look at in the nether. And also apparently they can pick up netherrack blocks, which is kind of cool. So yeah, Enderman now in the nether. We also have some very useful features for map makers that are available in creative only. So let me go ahead and show you some of those. So first of all, we now have a no gravity tag. So let me just show you what we can do with that. So say for instance, if I summon a boat with no gravity, then the boat just floats here and we can just get in it and we'll just basically <laughs> fly around all over the place. Uh, again, this is only available in creative, but Still very cool, still very cool, and you can do this with other things like entities, so like if I want to have like a polar bear for instance, uh, let's just get a polar bear in here, there we go, 
Got a polar bear, not affected by gravity. Very good, very good. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty cool. There are also changes to the structure block, which is very useful for map makers. So if we go ahead and take a look at the structure block, we'll see it now has an interface. And there's a couple different modes you can put the structure block in. Uh, so you can put uh, this in data mode, you can put it in save mode, which will actually save your structure. Uh, you can put it into load mode, which loads structures, and then you can put it in corner mode, which basically automatically uh, detects the size of your structure. So kind of useful for map makers. And there's also this new structure void block. If I go ahead and place this down here, uh, you can see it sort of is like a, almost like a skull size block. And it's invisible. You can walk through it. It doesn't have a, a hitbox or anything. And these are actually used in conjunction with the structure blocks to basically uh, make sure that blocks are not overwritten unnecessarily. So I'm going to very briefly show you how to use the structure blocks and what they can be useful for. So let me just go ahead and place one down right here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change this into corner mode. So that's basically a placement and size marker. Uh, we're going to name this structure house. So we're just going to make a basic house. There we go. And we're going to come up here and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to place another structure block right here, change it to corner mode, and we'll also name this house. And you can name it whatever you want to. Of course, the, uh, the structure block then changes its own name uh, to corner house right there. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to make a little house. So let's just go ahead and let's just put down something like this. Uh, let's just make it like a very basic structure. So let's just make it like this on the side. There we go. We'll put, let's say, dark oak planks along like this in the back and then like this. And let's go ahead and add some stone slabs on top. We'll just add some stone slabs here. Just like that. Very good. And let's say we add some glass in here. It doesn't have to be real fancy. We'll add some glass here. We can add maybe some... Uh, let's add some tinted windows. Let's add some light gray windows on the side, let's say. There we go. And then we're going to need maybe a front as well. So let's just go ahead and put down a door. Let's use a spruce door for this. And there we go. So there's our there's our little house right there. Very simple, very basic. Uh, but now what we can do is we can take our structure block and we're going to place down uh, the structure block again. We're going to go into save mode and we're going to say structure name is house. That's the structure we want to save we just created. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, tell it to detect it. And you'll see that basically uh, detects the outline of the structure and you see we also have like a little bit of space over here so actually we should probably yeah let's just go ahead and move this right here we'll move this in so let's just uh, let's see we'll do that like that and we'll tell it to detect it once more and so now it has refined it down so now we have the structure perfectly outlined that's what we want to see right there very good uh, so now that we have the structure perfectly outlined, we can uh, save it to a file. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And you'll see it says structure saved as house. So now that we have this structure saved as house right here, we can now place this house anywhere in the world with another structure block. So let's just say we want it to go over here. We'll place it on this island here. So if we wanted it to basically place that house right here we just basically put down this block we go into load mode now and there's a couple of options you can you can choose now uh, you can choose the the bounding box whether you see it or not you can you can rotate your uh, your structure 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees or zero which I'll have it just zero uh, and then basically just make sure your structure is named here and then all we have to do is basically give it a redstone signal and bang, there we go. There is our house, fully recreated in exactly the same manner as we had it before. So yeah, obviously a very, very powerful tool for map makers. And of course you can change these coordinates here. Uh, so let's say if I wanted to spawn it five blocks in. Um, and let's say, let's say 20 blocks up. You could do that as well. And also, let's also rotate it like that. And so you can see where it's going to spawn in now, right up here. So that's pretty cool. And then we just, you know, give it another signal. And there we go. There's our house. <laughs> All the way up in the sky. Of course, the door fell off because there's no supporting blocks. But yeah, very, very powerful uh, system with the structure blocks now. 
So those are all the changes I found in this week's snapshot. And yeah, looking like a good start to 1.10. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye.